Hello and welcome back to Space Entities. A new major update has been released and along with it a brand new DLC pack called Heavy Industry. And that's what we're going to look at today. What I'm not going to do is go through any of the base game items because everybody gets access to them and I'm sure you're more interested in the blocks included with the DLC pack. So that's what I've done over here. I've set up on a wooden platform all the blocks so they're clearly labelled out with a bunch of Vidina blocks sitting right behind their respective DLC pack items. What we're going to do is start with my personal favourite, which is the industrial hydrogen thruster sitting right over here. So this thing is a rather big boy in comparison to the vanilla hydrogen thruster being one block longer. But as you can see, there's a hell of a lot more detail going along with it. We've got pipes galore, we've got little wires, we've got warning labels and little sockets on here. We can come right up to it to see it says warning, high pressure. And we can come down to the base where we can see a lot of little details with the nuts and bolts. Our connection points, we've got little vents along the bottom. It's absolutely fantastic with how it's all been set up. And as we come up to the actual nozzle itself, we can see so much detail that goes all the way up and onto the inside where we've got almost like a heat plate system going along the inside. It's absolutely fantastic with how it's been set up. For comparison, this is the smaller large block version, which is identical to the small one in terms of size, but we still retain all the detail in the form of all the pipes, little capacitors and tanks along the side, and little vents going along the bottom. Fantastic stuff, and one of the main reasons why I got this DLC pack. These are absolutely glorious to look at, and do put the vanilla ones to shame. Yes, we can come across over to the small block versions. Once again, the larger one is one block taller. So if you are replacing your hydrogen thrusters on a old build, you will need to make aware that these are slightly longer. But again, we still got a lot of detail on here going all the way around. Then we come across onto the small block small one, which is very different compared to the others. Instead of having all the pipes and tanks glow around the outside, bring the free camera all the way over because this thing is a tiddly little thing. This is what we get. We've got these little pipes that come from the top that just curl around to the bottom all the way around here. So we don't have any of our small pipes, we don't have large pipes. It's simply a simple pattern all the way around. And for comparison's sake, here is my character coming up to it. You could use this as a seat if you wanted to. But yes, in terms of performance, they are identical. And their costs, if I find it in the form menu, we see the large ones cost there. And then there is the other one. They are identical in every aspect. But now we can move across onto these which are very fancy landing gears called the large magnetic plate. So these, well they are landing gear but they are more flush and have a larger surface area. For the base game version that was added with the update, we type in magnetic here, we got this lovely thing where we can paste it in and it's basically the same, it's simply a lot smaller. So it's a very flush version of the landing gear where if I was to shoot it all the way up in comparison, so you'd need to use six of the vanilla ones to get a comparable size to the DLC one. But their functionality is the same and they work very well as a landing gear or even just for a cargo drone which I'll set up over here. So this is one of my personal builds and we've got a magnetic plate sitting right on the bottom of a piston. And just to show you we can just come across very easy onto this glamorous pink industrial cargo container, lock ourselves in place and float away. So yes, it is simply just a landing gear, which I'm sure will get a lot of use considering how flush they are. So that is for those two. If we get a better look at the model, that is what we get. We've got some yellow work coming around the bottom all the way around the outside with a few vents that we can see. Coming up to here, we've got like little piston legs that will ultimately bend down when it's under pressure, but ultimately it's a static model. There we go with that, and looking at the top, looking down, there we go. And then of course we got the small block version which is simply a rounded one. We've got a metal pipe going around to one section. And there we go with that on the bottom. And then on the top. So yes, they are just simply a fancy version of the one added with the update for the vanilla game. Then on to the next one, this is the vertical button panel. So this is a singular button version of the regular button panel and it takes up a lot less space. Looking around the model itself, there we go. And coming up to it, we've got this big red button that we can press to do whatever we set up. I've set it up to turn on and off this vanilla spotlight in the background. So there we go. And then we've got these two buttons down here, which are how we're going to set stuff up. Come over here and make that detach. So when we hit the button, it's going to turn off the light. And it's also going to detach 
one of the rotors. Not sure which one is detaching, because there's quite a few on this grid, and I'm not too sure what that ship is currently doing, but I'm sure it's having fun. Yes, it's just a singular button panel, which is very nice if you are space conscious. Up next, we got our industrial conveyor pipes. So these are simply rounded versions of the vanilla ones with a few different ones for additional flair. And I'm pretty sure I've done a mod showcase on these beforehand. They look very similar. Anyway, over here is our conveyor junction. It's much more rounded than the square block that we're used to. And it's we've got all the ports on the side there with some handles on there for additional decoration. Up next, this is our conveyor sorter where we lose our green arrow on the side and instead we've got ourselves a button panel. The green arrow is on the very top and it looks a lot more fancier. Yes, we've got our conveyor ports on the side. Then moving all around over to here. There we go. Coming up next, we then got our corner conveyor, which is simply a rounded one that comes from the floor over to here. And we can't unfortunately jam yourself inside because it is an invisible wall. There we go with that one. We then got a cylinder pipe version of the traditional straight, where once again we can peer all the way through it. Then coming across onto these ones, these are basically the same, except they've got a slightly different base on them. So this one we've got a thinner base all the way around. Then over to this one, we've got a much thicker base with a tiny bit more detail along the pipe in the form of this yellow section with holes. Coming over to this last one, we do not have a base game version for it, but this is simply a multi-directional junction where we don't have one on the forwards and backwards, simply up, down, left and right. So this would be very nice to go along the roof of a ship or the roof of a base where you won't have one of those hideous conveyor ports sticking out the bottom and you try and find something to cover it up with. And then we come across over to this one. This is our cylindrical column, which is basically a big round version of our interior pillar, which can be put to very good use for, say, a decorative touch on the outside of a building. It snaps together very well. In fact, you can always stack it up onto one of them. Yes, there we go with that. It's very self-explanatory with what it is. Simply a very nice model can be used in place of a regular steel block. If we were to walk around to over to this one, this is our industrial hydrogen tank. So this is very different compared to the vanilla one that we're very used to. In fact, I'll bring the sun back around once again. There we go, that'll do nicely. Yes, so this is the hydrogen tank right here. And this is the DLC one. So we've got a big ball tank to store all the stuff in. We've got a fake ladder going from the bottom all the way to the very top. Where we do have our little circular part that we would spin around to open up and open the lid up. Get inside, which is our conveyor port with a little access point on the side. Yes, coming all the way down to the bottom, this is the base. Got some holes along the bottom, we've got some support struts to hold the ball in place. And it's a very nice design overall. Coming across onto this one, this is our industrial assembler. Which is very different once again, because it's like two assemblers stacked on top of each other. Except we've got a catwalk section on the top here. So if we were to find the catwalk blocks, which are, let's go for this one. You can stack it up and to make it go all the way along, like so. So you just walk along here, get on inside the assembler. Then we're gonna look at all the pipes going along there. We come down to the bottom, where we see inside here, a lot of different plugs, a lot of different switches that we could play with. But unfortunately, there's safety glass in front of it. Moving around over to this section, this is our conveyor port. Then we've got our module ports on the back there. And that's that on the opposite side. If I just remove this for the moment, we get rid of that. There we go, that should fall down. Coming over to this one, this is our industrial refinery. So it's exactly the same size as even the one right behind it. But just like the assembler, we've got ourselves some way to get up and some catwalks walking around it. So we've got pipes galore, we've got little capacitors everywhere, we've got warning signs, we've got vents. There's our access points and we can see all the way up to here where we do have a catwalk walkway. Where we can walk along here, we've got an access point to get inside it. Looking around, pipes galore, vents, we've got switches, high voltage, lots of stuff I want to press but you can't. And we can walk around these lovely stairs that are built inside, look at some more detail on it, which is very, very nice stuff. And of course, if we come all the way around to the very back, there's our module port. Coming across onto this one, this is our industrial large cargo container. It only comes in the large state, so you don't get a medium one or a small one. This is what we get. Is this a lovely square box? We've got our cargo port on the front that looks like it's been held in by yellow clamps. That comes across all the way around onto the side. We've got another port with little air vents. And along to the back is going to be the same as the front. 
and up and above there a nice clear side. For comparison, it looks very very different and looks like it can fit very well into square spaces unlike the large cargo container which did leave those little gaps on the corners. Then we come across over to these, so these are basically just small steel blocks that are a lot more fancier. These are the beam blocks. We've got lots of different ones for all different purposes and they simply have beams in the middle. There we go, just looking at this one. Then we've got this one. Then we've got a T-junction. Got a corner one. A rounded one. A very small corner one. A half block. A long corner one. And then we've got this one over here. So it's just nice to have it in a vehicle garage or in a vehicle assembly bay just like decorating the place up rather than having just regular steel blocks everywhere and it just adds a nice bit of decorative touch without taking away any functionality from the base game. And then last but not least we come across onto these and this is the hazard pattern skin. Now this is very much needed for the game because originally you would have to make them out of yellow and black blocks and simply dot pattern them around the stuff you want. You can colour them, I've got them in pink, white, green and you might be able to make it out from a distance but you can just sort of see it in the black colouring. If we just come down to here and take a better look at this we can see all the scuff marks on it from where you've been trawling along like little trolleys or vehicles have been driving over it and it does look fantastic. What I can do is just come over to here and bring the yellow one back over and what we'll do, oop that's the wave button, we'll just come over to here and we'll turn the entire platform into a hazard. So there we go with that. I really need that on all my ships so my passengers know what they're getting into. That is a very short and sweet video of what we get in the DLC pack. Is it worth getting? I definitely think it is. Everything in this pack does have a base game version and if it doesn't it's simply a deck for the block that doesn't take anything away from the base game. The hydrogen thrusters over here look absolutely fantastic. I absolutely adore how they've been set up, they look so realistic before the piping going round it. These over here, which are simply the larger versions of the magnetic plates, are fantastic if you are making a cargo drone or simply want to use them as a landing gear, but I do think the vanilla one that they added in is much better suited because of how flush it is. And yes, the conveyor pipes are very much welcome, along with the, the beam blocks because they do add a nice lot of stuff on there. And of course we got these over here which do look fantastic with how they've been set up but I do find that they might be a bit hard to fit in certain builds because of the ladder, because of the catwalks, it could be quite hard to build around if you're tight on space. So the base game versions may still be the ones to go to for a tight design. And of course the hydrogen tanks, I absolutely love this how it's all been set up, it is identical to the base game one. If we come over to here, take a look inside, we can fit 7.5, over to here, we can fit 7.5. So yes, there's nothing in here that stands out as an oddball, it is simply a fantastic pack overall, we get a nice lot of stuff with it. So yes, that is pretty much it for this video, I don't think I need to cover the base game stuff because you all get access to it and the armour plating is fantastic, the changing to the parking brake as well, that is going to save so many of my designs from falling off a rover and going clang. That is it for this video, I hope this was helpful. I hope it proved informative of what the DLC pack has to offer and what the models look like. So thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another video some point soon. Bye bye.